Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. My third little IG live for Late Night China Moses on Jazz FM. Hello, hey cousin, hey Naomi. Hey Samia. Hey, hey Fabrice, La Big Bertha. Hey, what's up baby? Hey Nicoluri, yes. <laughs> À la rage pour toujours. Yes. Hello, Brontosaurus Records. Hi, Lily Diams. Hi, Tonton Manu. I hope everybody's good. J'espère que tout le monde va bien. Um, je suis chez moi, comme tout le monde. Um, I'm at my house like everybody, and I'm going to only speak in English from now on. And I hope that y'all get it. Hey, Jean-François Martinelli. Hey. Nice to see you too, Fabrice. Um, and I just want you all to listen to this for a quick second, please. Just listen to this. Hey, Lassana. Gaiva. Listen to this, y'all. Killing bass. This is my late night track of the week this week on uh, Jazz FM. Now we're going to speak to the artist in a few minutes. Forgive me. Y'all hear that voice? He's always saying, forgive me. Yeah. Hey, Aisa. And his caresses hey, upset me. So, he whispers, you must forgive me. Y'all hear this, right? Y'all liking this, right? Because... I mean, it's just smooth. Forget me. He's always saying, forget me. Hey, all right. So, um, so this track is by an artist named Lauren Henderson, who I'm going to find and bring on so we can have a little conversation before tonight's show on Jazz FM Late Night China Moses that is on. 10 p.m. to midnight every Mondays through Thursdays. So let me find her. Here she is. Let's see how this works. Is this working? Hey, gorgeous. Hi. So good to see you. <laughs> Everybody, this is Lauren Henderson. Yay. I am so I'm so happy that we get a little moment to talk. Me too. Thank um me. listen, your song popped up and I was like, who's covering my song though? Like <laughs> nobody's supposed to know about that one. That 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 was a Shirley Horn. That's a that's a Shirley Horn fan favorite. Right. Um before we get into uh forget me, let me just ask you those basic questions like where are you from? What's your what's your musical journey? Whoa, what's going on? Gorgeous Absolutely. Lauren Henderson. Oh, thank you. And likewise, thank you so much for having me because I'm a huge fan of yours as well. Oh. And thank you, thank you. I'm so glad you like forget me. I'm I was born in Massachusetts in okay. a very small, small town uh, called Marblehead. Mm -hmm. And I went to undergrad in Massachusetts, graduate in Rhode Island, and then I came to the city in between that time period mm -hmm. uh, after graduating and fell in love with the jazz scene here in New York. And ever since then, it's been a beautiful journey. All right. So, okay. So you, you moved to the, to, the jazz, the, to, to the jazz mecca of the world. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. On um, I, I looked up some of your 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 videos and stuff. You also sing in Spanish. I do. I do. I definitely identify as a jazz and Latin jazz artist, or at least my roots coming from there. Definitely during the pandemic, I've been exploring even more different genres and fusion. Mm. I'm really what what, what, what roots? What what roots are we talking about? Because that ain't Massachusetts. 
Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, but roll it back for me a bit. Yeah, we got to go back. So my paternal uh, grandfather mm -hmm. was also born in Boston. My maternal grandfather was born in Panama. Okay. And my maternal grandmother was born in Montserrat in the Caribbean. So lots of Panama, Latin Montserrat, exactly. and, and Boston. Right. And then Boston, my, my dad's family, we, we identify as, as Black Americans. And mm -hmm. we've been in Boston for years and years. So actually, during this time period, we've been delving deeper into ancestry.com and our roots and everything but it's definitely a big part of my musical identity incorporating my latinx culture afro-latino culture along with african-american roots black american music and combined. yeah yeah that's important i mean we've all had time to to think and reflect right <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad that it's, you know, that that's your, been your journey and that you've been exploring that. It's really cool. Thank like, I was like, wait, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have to throw both. I have to throw both. No, out. but I think it's beautiful for artists to express all, you know, all of their heritage, is, you know, heritage and, and cultures and get into whatever you want to get to, you know, don't, you know, the world will put us in a box enough. Exactly. Exactly. And we don't have to fit in a box if we don't want to. No, might as well have fun, right? Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how did you, you put out project, you put out like a Christmas project, I remember, didn't you? I or was it an EP? It's an you EP. You did. I, I did. Played, I, I played your a Christmas song from your. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, but, I, I did that. Um, yeah, so what, so this, so Forget Me is the first single from a new album, I, I, Exactly. I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. Forget me. What I'm doing uh, with Musa, which is the album that's coming out, I'm rolling it out because I think it gives people more time to digest each track. And you put so much time into the project and each song uh, does kind of say something about a certain part of my identity. So I like to give them a little bit of breathing room. So yeah. Forget Me was the first single that we released. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm so happy that, that you picked it. Thank you so much for that. Oh, hey, I, I'm happy that you recorded this song now. Can you please explain, you know, the this song? And well, I mean, I guess it's you are a Shirley Horn fan. Absolutely. That's what okay. I was going to say. I think, I think we have this in common. I'm a huge, huge Shirley Horn fan. I definitely yes. grew up listening to tons of jazz. My parents are big jazz and Latin jazz aficionados. And so were my grandparents. So that's always been a part of the daily experience at home. Mm -hmm. But I remember moving to New York and someone telling me, wow, you must listen to a lot of Shirley Horn. And this is, you know, over a decade ago. And I hadn't. And so when I listened to her, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is exactly, you yeah. know, I connected with, with her the way that she interprets and and presents and I, I love listening to her. I never get tired of it. Yeah, for me, Shirley Horn is the queen of intimacy. Yeah. Like she knows how to create immediate intimacy within just a trio setting. Um, and I believe Forget Me was written by one of her friends or something, a, a poet, yes. right? Yes, absolutely. I, I just, I, I remember licensing for this and-, and Yeah, it, I, that her first name. It starts with a V. Valerie, I think. It's you're... Valerie Parks Brown. Brown. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. It's it's just because it, it's just because I remember when I heard the song first. I was like, oh shoot, who wrote this? Right. And I, it was really hard to find the information. Exactly. Um, and then I read this beautiful story, this friendship that she ha she had with Valerie Parks Brown, who's poet and educator and stuff, and surely turned her poetry into music oh my goodness you know you know and and uh i think it's great and it's such a cool lyric it is and it really it, is it resonates with me and you know i just 
the first time I heard it, I was like, I was under a spell. And then that's nothing, you don't want anything more than that when you're performing. So I started incorporating it into sets. And then this year I was like, I have to record this song. I love it so much. Uh, so I'm glad that we were able to do that despite everything going on. He, he, that's what I was gonna ask you. you record, did you record this during the pandemic? We did, we did. We social distance, but it, it was really nice. Uh, Sullivan, I've known for over a decade. He's one of Sullivan Fortner is on piano. A pianist, exactly. Incredible. And Eric Wheeler. With Eric Wheeler, e -dub, on the upright yes, bass. e <laughs> e I love him. Uh, I love the entire band. Everyone is amazing. And Joe yes. Dyson. Uh, yeah. Incredible, incredible. He's quickly become a good friend. Um, was it a perfect fit for this record? And I was just amazed how he could move from the flamenco and jazz fusion songs that are coming out in the next few weeks in between uh, Straight Ahead and everything else. It was just, it was really, really nice recording with them and seeing them, even though we couldn't touch and hug. Completely, and... <laughs> yeah. Uh, who, who else is it? There's Marquis Hill on trumpet, right? And Marquis, of course. I have to say this beautiful solo Marquis recorded from Chicago, actually, which was really special. And I'm so grateful and honored to have him on the track. I've worked with him before a couple of years ago, uh, but never recorded with him. And it was a wonderful experience. And he adds so much and, and really feels it in a beautiful way. So that was great. And who and, and we're missing one person. So Sullivan, yeah. Sullivan, Eric, and Joe. That's and then me. that's the, <laughs> and then you. Yes. Yeah. So is this a is this album that you've like produced yourself? Like, what's your what's your what's your artistic yeah. situation, my dear? <laughs> well, I'm also <laughs> I'm also the CEO of my own record label, Brontosaurus Records, which is how this was released, thank you. And it's by the artist for the artist, so the mission is really just to support whoever we can in the best way that we can. And I did go to school uh, for my master's in business, so I always try to incorporate what I've learned into what we're doing as yeah. artists and try to be someone who can empathize rather than not understanding what the artist is going through at all. So that's our mission. And uh, with Musa, the entire record will be out on June 11. So June 11. Friday, yeah, each Friday we'll just be releasing yeah. the singles. And there Until you get to June 11. Exactly, exactly. And so it's, so the situation that you recorded, um, the, 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 the album, was it like, so did you guys just do a couple of days? Like who, who did the arrangements and stuff? Uh, it was two days. Sullivan and I have been recording together since uh, for over a decade. So he's always the first person that I tend to show my original music to. And so we did a social distance uh, rehearsal right before going into the studio. Mm -hmm. And I showed him my originals. And then when we're in the studio, uh, he understands my gibberish and is able to you know communicate that to Joe and Eric who I feel like also understand my gibberish at this point so I have to say I have to <laughs> <laughs> they're, I, I have, they're fluent in Lauren Hendersonese right I like to I like to just set the songs I mean you you hire these wonderful musicians not to micromanage how they're playing but because you respect the voice that they have musically and yeah. because you admire it so besides providing the chords and charts. And then for, for this song, I had specific things in mind, so I'll share that, but it's really collaborative and I have to thank all of them. I'm not gonna take their credit for the arrangements and Sullivan has always had a big, big, big part. Uh, well, well it's a collaborative it. effort. It is, it is. I like Because it Sullivan be... can work with, you know, Cecile or, right. you know, play right. with my mom and stuff. And, and the stuff exactly. that he's playing is, is different. What's, what's great about the, the musicians you have who are very um, musicians who like the voice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fall off my rolling Sorry. Sorry for my musicians out there. 
singers. Some of y'all don't be liking us singers, jokes, for real. <laughs> it's got to be sad. I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it, you want to work with people who nurture and support you and push you to grow. Like Solvin and I are very close, so he'll let me know if, he, if something, you know, isn't up to par. And I feel the same with Eric and, and Joe, and they're they're the core of the entire album. Yeah. So it's, it's family. It's and I, I love that. And I want them, you know, even with my originals, I want to know, like, do you like this? Are you comfortable playing this? Like, can you connect to it? Because there's no need to shove it down anybody's throat if it's not the right fit. And yeah, exactly. It, it worked out well. So I, I'm, I'm so grateful to all of them. And I produced it myself. I, I Mark Ruffin, uh, has produced uh, Arma Me for me, and uh, Michael Thurber produced Alma Oscura, but all of my other records I produced, and this one, Musa, I produced as well. Okay, so so what's the this title, Musa? Musa, is it somebody? Is it the place? Is it... So Musa means muse in Spanish. Okay. And so all of the songs besides threading in love and the cliche themes that we see also like lots of longing um, passion just going through all of the different experience and emotional ups and downs and roller coasters that we've been through in our personal relationships especially during the pandemic so I definitely incorporated that into <laughs> You you got real. You did some therapy, some some ther therapeutic yeah, yeah. music. <laughs> it was my musical therapy session. The recording session was like too therapeutic for me, you know. So it was really it was a great experience, and I'm so grateful to everyone involved. And also, I have to mention the recording engineer because I've been working with him for ten years, and um, his name is Daniel. And it's great also to have someone else Spanish is my second language and even though it's part of my culture I've worked very hard to be able to uh, get it up to the right level so it's nice to have somebody else's ears from time to time yeah you know, things are all right so, so you've managed to construct yourself like a, a team around you, you know, since yeah. you started yeah. that's cool yeah but that is so cool. cool so I got to get into the arrangement a little bit. Yes. I got yes. nerd out a bit since yes. I know the original. Not everybody knows the original and stuff like that. And I like how y'all up the bounce aspect. Right. Because the original has that little bounce, but y'all just <laughs> pushed it a little, right. full, got, gave it a little head nod. You know, it, the arrangement, I was, I was telling them, like, I think what's really helpful for me and how I communicate with them is also telling people what I've been listening to or like, maybe there's a reference track or something that really stands out to me. And especially in the beginning of the pandemic, and this is nothing new, but I was listening to so much of Maj Jamal all the time. So listening. Ah, to <laughs> that's it. And everything that's else. it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now you said that. Now it just all clicked in my mind. Yes. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome now. how it shows up in the music. Right, right. Yeah, yeah so, right. sorry, people. That was a little nerd out moment. We got no, we have to. Nerd out. I mean, we're already doing a specialized, specialized genre. You know, might as well right. just jump off the deep end, you know, and, and, and go in. No, I really, I really love it. And I think the mix is wonderful. You sound super good. Like, you sound like some velvety, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Like I'm seeing film noir, like you're in the dark of the streets of Paris, you know, like oh, give yes. me all the nighttime <laughs> cliches of 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 uh that we can have of this the gorgeous woman with the hair blowing in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> but um this is the music walking video. meandering through the streets of wherever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you so much. <laughs> what are um what so on your album, so you say you have original tunes. Mm -hmm. So like, what's the proportion? How many like covers to originals do you have in your album, Musa, Musa that's coming out on the 11th of June? 
It's 50-50, which, which tends to be a pattern of mine. I, I didn't do that consciously, but all of the records I've done with originals, with the exception of an, another EP, all have 50% standards and 50% originals. So there are 11 tracks that will be available. One is a bonus track, and so it's basically a remix uh, with an incredible actor, dancer, a spoken word artist, uh, Daniel J. Watts. So what I did was uh, Marquise uh, played on an original that Sullivan and I wrote together. So that's the one original that Sullivan and I uh, collaborated on. And Marquise will also appear on that when that comes out in a few weeks. And so we have that, and then we have another version coming out with Daniel. So uh, I hope that- Cool. That I look forward to that. Yes. I look forward to that. For, I, got, I still got to play the song a little bit. I'm sorry. Just- Thank you. Y'all feel that bounce, y'all? Because <laughs> we allowed to bounce and listen to jazz. Hey, Marquis Hill. You're so good. And the Sullivan Fortner, one of the best pianists that we have in in his gener in his generation. Absolutely, I I couldn't agree more, and I I don't think I'm biased at all. He's he's no no S Sullivan Sullivan Eric Lewis. Uh, I mean, we got Christian Sands. I mean, we got a whole bunch. You know, it's what's really, um, what really thrills me hearing your mu hearing your music. The fact that you chose this song, the the way that it sounds, that it sounds very respecting tradition, but yet very modern. And I always like I have like this little playlist that I send to people who tell me that you know the future of jazz is not secure, like the more traditional side and quote unquote, like how do we make the tradition sound cool, right. Right. you know? <laughs> and I, I really think you've done that. I mean, I, you're definitely going on that list where people are just like, yeah, there's no other singers. Like, I'm like, hold well, that thought, press play, listen, you know? Um, <laughs> so I really appreciate it that you're going out and defending and and keeping this part of our culture alive. That means the world from you. And thank you for oh, saying girl. that and understanding that. And, and I feel the same way about you. I mean, I'm so happy to be connected <laughs> with you. This is wonderful. About this is wonderful. It's virtual, <laughs> but it's wonderful. Right, exactly. And I, and I think it's important for us to do, to keep carrying the torch. Uh, but we have to change with the times. Like Nina Simone said, we have to reflect the times. And yes, we do. And that's what I'm trying to do. But, uh, you know, so much to learn still. <laughs> hey, it's a, it's a long and short road at the same time. Right. <laughs> so you got, you, you got time and at the same time, you don't have time if you want to think of it that way. You know, you take your time to do music at the speed that you want to do it. Right. Right. You know, um, I just I just wanted to, to wrap up by saying thank you for accepting this because it's like it's always last minute because I, I, I have a trouble deciding fast what like late night tracks of the week suggestions are. Um, so thank you for responding so quickly. You're you're brilliant. And I look forward to hearing the rest of the album. Um, so the album is called Musa. Yes. It's coming out on June 11th. The first right. single is Forget Me. It's the late night track of the week here on Jazz FM in the UK. This is Lauren Henderson, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful, brilliant chanteuse, and songstress, Merci. And, <laughs> author, and then also your singer songwriter, you know, and, and musician. So and the independent artist. Lord have mercies, how, do we, how many titles do we have to wear now? <laughs> I know, right? We have it's to like, wear, I can't. We wear all these hats. <laughs> all these hats, but you wear them well. So I really, really appreciate it. And um, really, just keep us informed. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. And, and uh, oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. And I, and I, and I got to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but from the day that I met him. Come on, girl. Shirley Horn's hard to cover. Thank you so much. <laughs> Listen, you can feel it just like I do. the bounce is so rude on this. Like people don't realize how rude this bounce is. I hope they realize. I know we were doing the. It's, it, it totally is. Like you can definitely be like, hey, 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 hey. There's the bounce up in there, and I love that. And I, it's it's little things like that that help us bridge a gap, right. you know, a generational gap that we can have sometimes with a newer audience and an older one, you know, or somebody who likes more traditional stuff and everything. Be like, yo, but you know what? It's a cover, but we got the... <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just a little. Just a little. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much, Lauren Henderson. You. for your for your time for the music for putting your savings and energy into it thank you. thank you for sharing your musical therapy with us thank you for having me and thank you for appreciating it and thank you for all that you do i'm so grateful for you we out here we're out here <laughs> <laughs> stay in touch babe i will <laughs> thank, thank you, you. <laughs>